Good morning and welcome to our online services. I hope this morning that this service finds you well and safe. If you are visiting with us, not part of the regular River Park family, again, we, we've said this every week, we pray that there'll be a day that soon that you can come and join with us, that we can meet you in person. Our services are normally at 10 o'clock in the morning. We start at actually at 10, 10. And so you can find us every Sunday online here or in the future, if you can come join us in Russellville, Arkansas, we would be glad to have you. This morning, as we come together, even though we're not together in person, we are together in spirit. Let us worship the Father together in spirit. out here this morning uh, as I look around uh, at all of the things that God uh, made for us to enjoy it's it blows my mind at all the all of it the the uh, you know how big it is uh, but it also helps kind of put things in a perspective that you know as good as we have things here on earth someday we it will even be better when we're, we're in that wonderful place called heaven. Last week, uh, David uh, touched on that a little bit as he uh, uh, talk, talked about how the peace and the joy and the comfort that we can have in knowing that. Um, it really doesn't matter what kind of trials or tribulations or, you know, the, the things that don't go right while we're here on earth, someday uh, 
it's all going to be fine. It's, it's all going to be good regardless of what happens here on earth. Uh, as long as we keep faith in God. And I would like to, uh, this morning as we pray, you know, keep that in the, in the back of your mind as we, uh, as we pray. Uh, would you pray with me? Our God and our Father, we are, we are so, such a blessed people and we're so thankful for that. We're thankful for the things that you made for us to enjoy here on earth, these, these mountains, the valleys, the, the rivers, the streams, the birds and the animals, and all that you created for us to enjoy. We're thankful for, for our families and, and for our friends and for the fellow Christians that we get to uh, be with. And we're thankful that uh, as Christians, that someday we can be with you in that wonderful place called heaven. Father, we know that, that you sent your son, Jesus, to this earth. And he's the one that made it possible. He was so unselfish in the way that he gave his life for us on that, that awful cross of Calvary. Father, we pray that we will we'll never take the, the things that was done for us for granted. And that we will always be, be thoughtful, be thoughtful and mindful of those. Father, we, we look forward to that day when we can be with you in heaven. But until that day, we pray that you'll walk with us and guide us and protect us and show us the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
uh, Harley Sisson, and I'm a member of a River Park Church, and I've been asked to uh, make some comments about giving this morning and, and offer up a prayer. It's uh, this time we've been living in. It's, uh, there's been a lot of giving going on in the communities and through the state and through even through our country. But uh, when we think about giving, we think about money. Uh, we think about our income. But I guess this morning I really want to talk about uh, what else we can give other than those things. Even though we have to have those things as a church to, to function and take care of the responsibilities we have, um, there's other ways that we can give too. And I think probably the most important thing that we give uh, is our time to each other. And we neglect sometimes giving that time to our families, to our spouses, to our children. And, and I hope this morning that, that we will really reflect on the time that we spend with each other and, and the people that really count in our lives. And then take an opportunity to give to people uh, that need encouragement, uh, that need help, and maybe need some guidance. And it's important that we look for those opportunities uh, each and every day. So this morning, as we talk about giving, yes, we do need to give of our means and give as we prosper, but yet... Let's also don't, don't neglect the opportunities that we have to give back to each other uh, in so many different ways. Now let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for our health, for the opportunities that you place in front of us, for the talents and skills and the education that, that you've afforded us in our lives, and for all the different means that we have to to make a living for our family and provide for them the necessary things of life. We just hope that we will always appreciate each and every opportunity that you put in front of us. Help us to be a considerate, giving, loving uh, church. and Help us to always look for those opportunities to help all of those in our community that might need our help. Help us not to do, neglect the ones that we love the most keep all of those in our mind and in our time as we live our life. Go with us and heaven save us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
This week, Cher was making some of her famous yeast rolls. It's actually a family recipe that goes back generations. She calls it Grandma White's yeast rolls. She was making them for her brother-in-law in Florida because our son is about to take a trip there. And while she was making them, she decided to use a slightly different recipe because we were running short on time. So instead of like four or five hours of rising, she only did one hour of rising. And when she made the yeast rolls, they came out of the oven and they smelled so good. And, and they're warm. And so we got them while they were warm. We cut them open. We put some butter on them and we eat them. And oh, they just taste so good. But they weren't as good as they normally are because they had only risen for one hour instead of four or five. They were close. They were good, but they were not as good as they could be. We're going to talk this morning about patience as we continue to look at how we can have a heart of peace. One way we can be at peace more is to be patient, to have patience in our life. Patience is this, the ability to be calm in the face of adversity, frustration, or suffering. Again, patience is the ability to be calm in the face of adversity, frustration, or suffering. And in any given situation, you're going to respond with some measure of patience or the complete lack of it. Every situation, we're either going to respond with some patience or the lack of patience. One thing that I've learned as I've studied patience is that patience and endurance literally go hand in hand. When we realize, when we know that we can endure something, we are much more patient with that situation. But when we feel like we can't endure it, that we won't endure it, that there is no hope of enduring, that is when we begin to lose patience. Often we are tempted to, to just give up, to lose our patience. I know I've heard plenty of parents say to their child, I am about to lose my patience with you. Victor Hugo, the author of Les Mis, said this, perseverance or patience is the secret of all triumphs. If you've ever set a goal for yourself, if you've ever tried to achieve something, then you know there's hurdles, there's obstacles, there's things that get in the way. And if we don't have patience, we could possibly give up. But when we are patient, when we persevere, when we endure, we are able to triumph, we're able to meet those goals and to succeed. So why are we tempted to give up? Well, I think there's three reasons. The first of those is inconvenience. We feel inconvenience from time to time. Like my story of the yeast rolls, our son was leaving for Florida and we didn't have the convenience of four or five hours to let this dough rise. Instead, we went with something that was much more convenient, one hour. The rolls were good, but they could have been so much better. The second reason that we are tempted to give up is because of being uncomfortable. Sometimes we're just uncomfortable and that discomfort makes us want to give up. Just this week, I was running some packages to the UPS store. I don't know if you have ever gotten new ink cartridges for your printer, but a lot of times they come in a box that you can reuse to recycle and they even come with a UPS label. Shipping's already paid for. You put the old cartridge in the box, you seal it up, you put the sticker on it, and all you gotta do is go down to the UPS office and just drop it off. 
well with all the coronavirus precautions going on, the way the UPS operation is going, in our town at least, is everything is happening right at the front door. Their doors are open, they have a table set out, and they have this plastic sheet in front of it. And so every customer stands outside to do their business with the UPS office. Well, the day I went there, there were two people in line ahead of me. There was a man who was talking to a young lady inside, and there was a woman who was waiting with me. And so I sat there, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And the, the, the woman told me, she says, sir, are you just dropping those off? I said, yeah, I am. She goes, well, you can go ahead of me, which I totally appreciated. But we waited, and we waited, and we waited. And after a while, these packages started getting a little heavier. They weren't that big, but, you know, when you stand somewhere for a long time, things just seem to get heavier. And so I, I shifted around. I had four of them. I shifted around, put two in this arm and two in the other arm, and I waited. The young lady working with the man at the door asked some questions and she went back into the back and the man stood there. And the woman stood there and I stood there. The young lady came back, asked him some more questions and then she went back to the back again and he stood there and the woman stood there and I stood there. It seemed like this was going on forever. And then I began to realize the sun's shining on me. I feel the heat of the sun, but I'm like, I'm a fair-skinned person. I don't, I don't have a hat. My, hair, my head could get sunburned. My neck could get sunburned. I don't want to get sunburned. I, I didn't put any sunblock on to come to the UPS store and stand in the parking lot. And so I stand there, and I wait, and I wait, and the woman waits, and the man waits. And finally, the woman, the young lady gets done with the man, uh, and she says next and you know the lady lets me go ahead and go and so I take my boxes up and she goes you just dropping off I go yeah that's it and she goes okay thank you and 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 off we go I get back to my car and after all this waiting after juggling these boxes around after worrying about getting a sunburn I look at my watch it's been a grand total of five minutes five minutes but I was so uncomfortable I was ready to give up. I literally thought to myself, you know what? I'll just get back in my car and I'll come back another day. There's a third reason we tend to give up. And this is the most significant reason or it's the most assured reason, the firmest reason why we would give up. And that is when we have a lack of hope. In the game of chess, there's a moment where the losing player gets to this point where he cannot move his king. They can't move their king anywhere without jeopardizing them getting captured. And they're already put in the case where they are going to get captured. So it's like they can't stand, stay there and they can't move. That's called checkmate. And what happens in a game of chess when there's checkmate? The, the losing player tips over his king and says, you know, basically says, you got me, stands up and shakes the, the opponent's hand and says, good game. In a simple game like chess, that's just a moment. That's a moment where we can look at and say that's a firm example of having no hope. The person can't stay there. The person can't move. The king is in jeopardy. It's checkmate. And there is no hope left for winning that game. Patience is a sign of hope. When we lose our patience, it's because we've lost our hope, and that's when we want to give up. Micah is a great example of patience and hope. In the beginning of Micah chapter 7, he explains that there is no harvest where there should be one. The grapes are gone, the figs are gone, and he is hungry and he goes and he says, there is no harvest. Things are not the way they're supposed to be. And then he says, all the good people are also gone. And he describes all these different situations where people are just bad. They're, they're mean and they're evil to each other. And he says basically that people are not the way they're supposed to be. Things are not the way they're supposed to be. People are not the way they're supposed to be. Everything is all messed up. Sound familiar? But listen to Micah's words. Listen to the heart of his words towards the bottom of that section. This is what he says. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. So how do we be patient? Well, first, we just need to ask ourselves three questions related to those three previous points. Am I inconvenienced? Am I uncomfortable? Or am I without hope? And what we need to do, the second part is, we need to recognize inconvenience as inconvenience. 
And we need to recognize being uncomfortable as being uncomfortable, instead of trying to label those as situations where there is no hope. You know, with all the coronavirus precautions going on, like I mentioned at the UPS store, there's, there's another one where I was going through a drive through at one of the fast food places here in town, and one of their precautions that didn't make any sense to me at all was they wanted you to drop your credit card into this metal pan, like one of those pans that they use in a kitchen. They wanted you to drop it into this pan, and then the person working at the window would pull it out of the pan and then they'd run it in the machine, and then they would drop it in the pan, and then you could pick it up. But you couldn't just hand it to each other. Now, I thought that was a little crazy, because I'm like, if there's germs on my hand and I touch that card, even if I drop it in that pan, you pick up that card, guess what? Those germs are on your hand. So we might as well just hand it to each other. But I recognized that moment as an inconvenience. All that was was an inconvenience. So I don't need to be impatient in that situation. Instead, I give the person the benefit of the doubt that they're trying to do the best they can. They're following what their their boss, their supervisor, what their company policy is, or, or whatever may be going on. But I want to give them the benefit of the doubt that they are doing this to the best of their ability on good terms and good faith. And while I may see it as an inconvenience, I need to recognize inconvenience as inconvenience, not a loss of hope. And so because of that, I can say, okay, I recognize this is just an inconvenience. So I can still be patient because guess what? This too shall pass. Let's close by thinking about farming. In James chapter 5, he talks about having hope and he talks about being patient. And he uses the example of a farmer, a farmer who waits for the spring and the autumn rain. Imagine being a farmer. You have to wait. You plant seeds, you put them in the ground, and what? You have to wait. It's a terrible inconvenience. It's a terrible time of being uncomfortable. Like, I want the food. I want it to grow. I want it to be here right now. I want to plant it, and tomorrow I want to harvest it. But we all know that that's not the way farming works. So what is a farmer? A farmer is a patient, patient tenant of the soil. He takes care of the soil. He takes care of the seed. He waits for the spring and the autumn rains, and he cares for his plants. And when the time comes, then he reaps the harvest. But until then, he maintains an attitude of patience. Look what James says. He says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. He could ask himself, Am I inconvenienced? Am I uncomfortable? Am I without hope? Well, two of those may be yes, but the last one is not because the hope of the harvest is coming. He says, you too, James says, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. The Lord's coming is near. That statement is the foundation of our hope. The Lord's coming is near is near. Friends, I want to encourage you to be patient. To be patient because we have a hope that is greater than any other hope in this world. And while things that are bad may happen to us, bad situations, bad things that happen at our work, bad things happen in relationships, they are a terrible inconvenience. And while we may suffer loss, we may suffer sickness and illness and even death, those are obviously terrible times of being uncomfortable. But none of those situations take away our hope. We are never without hope because Jesus is coming. You know, as we approach the table of communion this morning, the table of bread and the table of wine. We do that to commemorate, to remember Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. But there's more that's going on there because, yes, there's a death that paid for our sins and, and we say hallelujah because of that. And there's also a later resurrection from the dead where Jesus conquers death once and for all. But for us this morning, you, you may not consider this before. You may not have considered this before, but why is it that we still take communion? Why do we continue to remember His death? Why do we remember His body and His blood? 
not because it was just something of the past, but because we have hope in what's coming in the future. We continue to remember because we have hope that Jesus is coming back. And so until he does, we patiently wait. Patiently wait in the hope of the crucified Savior who was resurrected from the dead, who ascended to heaven and is preparing a place for us now, is one day coming back. And so we remember in hopeful patience as we wait. Let's pray and then take the bread and the juice. Lord Father, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for your patience with us. And I know we can be a terrible inconvenience and sometimes probably make you very uncomfortable. But we thank you for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus, the hope of salvation, the hope of sins being washed away, the hope of life beyond this. Help us to recognize that when we are inconvenienced, it's just an inconvenience. And when we are uncomfortable, it's just being uncomfortable. It doesn't mean we're without hope because our hope is found in you. Help us to hold fast to that, to not give up, and to live lives that are patient and kind and loving to our fellow person. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do Wait upon the Lord. Wait.